Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video and especially another video in our Linux journey. As we take our next step and we learn all about logs, and I know sometimes that may not be a sexy topic, but it's also very vital because logs allow you to monitor your system and also as well troubleshoot your system. Since there's a lot of information when it comes to logs, I've broken this video up into two parts so that way I don't overload you guys with a lot of information. Now before we jump into logs, Make sure you go ahead and give me a like for the video as it helps the channel grow. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that way you're notified whenever we upload new videos to the channel and share this with a friend or a family member who's interested in learning about Linux. Or maybe they just wanna see my channel. I got a lot of other cool content on here. So let's head over to the desktop and let's go ahead and tackle part one. Hey everyone, welcome back to my desktop. And more importantly, as you're seeing here on the screen, welcome to not one, but two virtualized rel boxes. And in order to talk about logs, which are very, very important, we need two in order to showcase how cool some of the features are. So on the left here, you see rel eight. And of course, on the right, you're going to see rel nine. And in order to figure out if that's really true or not, we can take a quick look and say, hey, let's take a look at the release. So you see here that I have Red Hat 8.7 on the left. And let's go over on the right and do the same thing. Awesome, so rel 8.7 on the left, rel 9.1 on the right. Now remember, as we continue talking today and learning all about logs, you should be at a point where you understand a lot of what's happening already. And if not, I'll go ahead and put a link in the playlist so that way you can start from the first video and work your way all the way up to this video. So that way you don't get lost because I say this in every video, if you're new to the channel and you're coming here for the first time and you've never seen this before, it's very easy to get lost. And of course, we don't want you to be lost. So make sure again, you check out the playlist, start from the first video and work your way up to this one. All right guys, so with all that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about logs now and why logs are so important. And I'll try to keep the definitions to a minimum because I don't wanna put you guys to sleep, but we do have to talk a little bit about what it is and why it's so important. So let's talk a little bit about why logs. Why do we even care? And logs are a great tool for monitoring, auditing, and troubleshooting our machines. And it's very, very important that we learn this skill so that way when we're monitoring a whole bunch of machines, let's say you're a system admin, you can see what's wrong. Or let's say you're a cybersecurity expert and you need to make sure that none of your systems are being attacked you can take a look at the logs in order to see if anyone is failing when it comes to a password check. More on that later. So when it comes to logs, there's two main ways that RHEL has it built into the operating system. And on the RHEL 9 box here, just because I randomly clicked that one, the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'll type the name of the first one and it's called system D dash or hyphen journal D. So this is the first system in RHEL in order to work with logs. And the next system that we're gonna talk about is called rsyslog. So now that you know the two names of the different systems, let's talk a little bit about each of them and we'll do some examples so that way you can see what is the benefit of having one versus the other. So let's start on the first one, which is system D journal D, or I'm just gonna be calling it journal D from now on. So journal D collects logs from a couple of places. And some of those places are systemd services, kernel, and user processes. Now, journal D provides real-time monitoring and advanced filtering. And by the way, it happens to store its log in binary format. And as we go through these definitions, just hear them out for now, and we're gonna see some examples so that way you don't get lost as to what I'm saying. Now, let's talk a little bit about our syslog. Now, our syslog is a traditional type of logging system, and it's really meant for long-term storage. Now, it saves the logs in plain text, and it saves it in a specific location, and we'll talk about what that location is. And our syslog allows for cool things such as rotation, and remote forwarding. So enough about definitions because my job is not to put you to sleep, it's more to connect the dots and for you to learn. So let's head over to our RHEL 8 machine over here and actually go through some examples so you can see the differences between journal D and our syslog. Now the first item that I wanna showcase to you and we talked about it briefly in the overview is log storage. And we talked before that journal D stores it in a binary format while our syslog stores it in a plain text format. So let's take a look at that example. 
So the first one that we're gonna take a look at is our syslog, and we're gonna see what that looks like if we do an ls to take a look at the files in the directory. It's var, log, and then it's called messages. And you can see that the file actually exists. So if I were to use the less command in order to take a look at what's inside of it, and of course, you do need elevated privileges for this, so make sure you put a sudo in front of it, we can see all of our logs here. And by the way, in order to make this a little bit easier on the eyes, let's go into full screen mode for our rel eight box and we'll leave rel nine running in the background. So here you can see all the logs and especially from today, January 10th. And of course this is in military time. So 153302. So the system was running earlier on today when I left it running. And as we go down the list here, you can see that it's capturing all the logs even up to the more recent one, which is January 10th at 19.22. By the way, that's something that I still struggle with till this day is military time. I'm so used to just regular civilian time. So you got a good look now as the rsys log, how do you view that? And especially we use the less command. Now let's take a look at the journal D log and see what that looks like. And remember, I said it was stored in a binary format. And just to make sure that that file exists, we do an ls, it's under slash run, slash log, journal, and then we have this big string followed by system.journal. And as you can see here, the file does exist. So let's use the less command now and view what's inside of that. The terminal actually tells us that it may be a binary file. Do you wanna see it anyway? So let's go ahead and hit yes. So as you see here, this is a bunch of binary data that we as human can't read. And so, the question now is, how do we view the data that's in this log, especially when we're interested in accessing the logs from a journal D perspective? So if we quit out of here, and I show you guys the man page for a command called journal CTL, you can see here that this command actually queries the system D journal, which is what I just showed you guys. So let's quit out of here, and let's type in journal CTL, and let's hit enter on that. And you can see now that what is happening is journal CTL, which is the command, is actually reading that log file and it's translating it for us so that way we can see what's happening. So as you see here, we have access to a bunch of different logs that is collected by journal D. And let's do something really interesting. Let's go ahead and shrink this a little bit. Let's open up another terminal. Now with our second window open, let's go ahead and take a look at the logs again for our syslog. And if you recall, we did it less on var log messages. And let's go ahead and put a sudo in front of that. The logs capture different things. And as you recall in the beginning when I was doing my intro on this, one of the things that I said that journal D does, it collects logs from the kernel itself. And you're actually seeing that over here, right? These are logs that are captured from the kernel. Whereas our syslog typically collects logs based off of applications, scripts, or non-system D services. So here you can see things like DNF as an example, right? When we are doing our package management. And if we were to take a look at DNF on the other side, so let's head over to our Journal D, let's search for DNF. Look at the differences between the two. Journal D tells us that it starts to update the subscription management repositories, which is the same thing that we see on the right-hand side when it comes to our syslog, but our syslogs gives us a little bit more details because you can actually see that packages for Azure CLI was captured, extra packages for RHEL 8 was captured. I don't see that same information over on the Journal D side. So just take a notice of the different types of logs that are captured by each of those systems. The next thing I wanted to point out to you guys between the two systems, and I like to call it persistence. And what I mean by persistence is, are these files permanent or are they just temporary? And by default, if we take a look at journal D, journal D actually is a temporary file. So looking at our terminal on the left here, if we remember that command that we did, that less command in order to take a look at the binary file, and it's under the slash run directory. That directory, especially when you follow the full path, that is just a temporary directory. So meaning after a reboot, all that data actually disappears. And there's actually a way that you can set journal D to save that data permanently. 
but we're not actually going to show you that. And the reason why we're not going to show you that is because one of the default features of our syslog is to save data permanently. And it saves it in a couple of locations and we'll talk a little bit about that. So that's an interesting relationship between the two. And by the way, one of the things that I will point out is journal D actually sends its data over to our syslog and our syslog saves it for permanent use, which is a really cool relationship between the two systems. And that's the reason why I mentioned that journal D, although you can save that data permanently, it doesn't really make sense because the data is being fed into our syslog and our syslog is actually doing the work of saving that log for you permanently. So now that we know that our syslog is saving all that data permanently, let's talk a little bit about where it's saving those. So let's review a few places where our syslog saves its data. And one of the first things that comes to mind is general system logs. So if we were to do an ls and we were to do a slash var slash log slash messages. This file here is for general system logs. Now, when we think about authentication and security logs, you'll find that in ls slash var slash log slash secure. This file here, again, is for authentication and security logs. Cron jobs. Now, I know we haven't gotten to cron jobs yet, but know that it will be covered in the future. And just so you're aware of what that is, all that is is a task or a job that will be completed in the future. And you can see the logs for that in this file that I'm about to show you. So if we were to do an ls slash var slash log slash cron, you can see here that that is the file in which our syslogs saves the data for cron jobs or cron logs. Now that you know all the files Let's go ahead and take a quick peek in each of them so we can kind of get to see what's inside of those log files. So let's take a look at the general system logs real quick. So if I were to do a less var log messages, and of course, remember to put sudo in front of it, we need to elevate our privileges. So we can see here all the general logs. Great, let's exit out of this. Next one on the list, let's take a look at any authentication or security logs. So let's replace the messages with secure. So we can see here all the authentication and security logs. Let's quit out of this. And lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at the cron logs. So let's replace secure with cron. And you can see all the cron logs here. And let's quit out of this. Now to recap, at this point, you learned what the difference is between our syslog and also as well journal D. And from a basic perspective, that is, we took a look at the log storage or the log locations and how they're stored. You learn the commands in order to be able to access the logs. And if it's a journal D, you're using journal CTL, or if it's our syslog, you can use anything in order to read it. And when I say read it, I mean read the logs because it's written in plain text. So in my particular case, I use less, but you're more than welcome to use VI as a text editor. You can use cat. There's many things that you can use in order to see the logs. And we also talked a little bit about persistence, meaning what is stored temporarily and what is stored for long-term use. And again, we saw all the locations where that is stored. So welcome back guys. By now you've learned a lot about logs and hopefully you can use some of the information that you've learned here in order to monitor or troubleshoot your Linux systems. Now keep in mind, this is a lot of information that you just learned. So if this is your first time seeing this, don't feel overwhelmed like you're never going to get this. Go ahead and keep practicing. Practice makes perfect. And even though I'm teaching you today about Linux, this is over many years. It's not something that I learned overnight. So keep at it and you'll be a master at mastering logs or just Linux in general. Now stay tuned to the channel guys as more Linux content is coming on the way. But until then, Make sure you go ahead and give me a like for the video as it helps the channel grow. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that way you're notified whenever I upload new videos to the channel and share this with a family member or friend. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.